All right, let's get started. Uh, thank you everyone uh, for, for joining us today uh, from, from all over the world. Uh, it, was, it was great to see uh, through the chat, uh, you know, all the different countries that you're joining from. I hope uh, all of you are uh, staying safe and keeping well. Uh, I join you today from uh, Mumbai, uh, India. Uh, my name is Praveen Umanath and I'm uh, uh, part of the product and marketing team here at Browser Stack. Uh, and today I'm very excited uh, to present to you a webinar on mobile app testing strategy, uh, how to get it right by uh, Simon Werner. Uh, he is uh, a test automation engineer at the House of Test. And um, yep, we'll talk more about Simon and his background a little later on um, uh, in the webinar when I introduce him. So uh, before we get started, uh, just wanted to run a few housekeeping uh, items. So the webinar will run for uh, 60 minutes. Uh, and is being recorded. Uh, we will try to save about 15 minutes uh, towards the end of the webinar for any Q&A. Uh, I encourage you to use the Q&A button uh, in Zoom uh, to submit your questions throughout the webinar and uh, we'll save the last 15 minutes to address as many of them as possible. Uh, we'll also make the recording uh, available to all of uh, all of you uh, via email. So we'll send out a link and we will also upload it on our uh, YouTube channel. So you can always go there and check it out. Awesome. Great, let's get started. So before uh, we go into Simon's webinar, I just want to spend a couple of minutes introducing uh, everyone to Browser Stack, uh, a little bit about our history. So we launched uh, almost 10 years ago now uh, in 2011. Uh, and uh, you know our first, uh, first product was uh, helping developers uh, test uh, for IE, uh, test their websites on IE. And uh, you know, uh, uh, it took us about six months to get to a thousand customers. Uh, and uh, you know, since then it's it's been um, you know uh, a rocket ship uh, of a journey. Uh, Nakul and Ritesh, our co-founders, uh, literally built the first version of Browser Stack, working out of a coffee shop, and uh, you know they they built it to solve a problem that they were facing. Right, as developers, they wanted to build a website uh, for one of their businesses, and uh, they took a few days to build the website, but they took much longer to actually try and test the website on IE 11 uh, because they were developing on uh, on Mac OS. So they realized this is a problem. And uh, you know they realized this is a problem that developers all around the world, developers and QA professionals all around the world are facing. And that was the inspiration uh, for the uh, first, first version of Browse Stack that launched 10 years ago now. Uh, and yeah, today, uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, offices uh, in, uh, San Francisco, Dublin, Mumbai, and New York. Uh, we have 750 plus employees uh, from around the world. Uh, and yeah, we're very, very excited to be able to present this webinar to you today. Uh, here's a little bit about our customer base. So we've got 25,000 plus customers across verticals, uh, whether it's finance, technology, uh, media, publishing, uh, education, or retail. Uh, we've got some of the top names in each of these uh, verticals uh, who are our customers today. Uh, Browse Stack also is uh, used by a lot of open source projects. Uh, so we sponsor uh, open source projects. So if you are working on an open source project, just give us a shout out. Uh, we will uh, set you up with a free Browse Stack subscription and uh, you can get your open source project uh, tested uh, on Browse Stack. So we've got names like jQuery, Angular, Ember, uh, and many more uh, who are using Browse Stack uh, to test their projects. Uh, a little bit about our scale. Uh, we've got uh, over 2 million registered users. Uh, we process 72 billion Selenium commands a year through our uh, automated testing product, uh, web automated testing product. Uh, we've got customers in over 135 customer, uh, countries and we've got over 15, we've got 15 globally distributed data centers around the world. Uh, some of the world's largest uh, cloud providers actually rely on Browse Stack for their testing. So we've got Amazon, Google, Oracle, and Microsoft, all who are customers of Browse Stack and use Browse Stack to test their web and mobile applications. So let me talk a little bit about our products, uh, just a quick highlight. So uh, we've broadly sort of grouped them into three categories. We've got web testing, mobile application testing, and uh, some of the free tools we offer. So uh, on web testing, we've got three main products, live, automate, and version. So live helps you do uh, interactive or manual cross-browser testing, right? On on different browsers and devices, right? So we support over 2,000 plus uh, browsers and uh, mobile device combinations today, and uh, we offer only real mobile devices. So we don't, uh, uh, you know, uh, get you to test on emulators or simulators. We actually provide uh, real mobile devices, uh, both on iOS and Android, uh, that you can run and load your websites on. 
uh, Automate is our automated web testing product. So <clears throat> it's primarily a Selenium grid on the cloud. Um, again, you get access to the same set of browsers, desktop browsers and mobile browsers on real browsers and devices. Uh, so you can run your automated tests. Uh, we have customers running hundreds of parallels, uh, completing their builds and tests in, in minutes and sometimes seconds uh, on our uh, Selenium grid on the cloud. Uh, our latest addition is Percy. Uh, Percy, uh, we added to BrowseStack a couple of years ago. Uh, it, it helps you do visual testing and review. So with Percy, you can actually compare uh, what your website looks like, right? Compared to your baseline, right? So if you have an ideal version or an ideal sort of design for your website, uh, you want to make sure that on the different browsers uh, that exist out there, uh, your website is rendering the way you want it to render, right? So we actually help you do visual review and comparisons uh, on our cloud. Uh, next up, we have our mobile application testing products. So uh, we have App Live uh, and App Automate, which are similar to Live and Automate, except that you know you can basically test your interactive uh, mobile apps, right? Uh, sorry, test your uh, native and hybrid mobile apps uh, both interactively and uh, uh, you know through uh, automated testing frameworks like Espresso, Appium, uh, XUI. Uh, uh, so th those are some of the common uh, sort of. Uh, uh, App automation frameworks that we support, right? And again, all of these tests are run on our real mobile devices. And uh, lastly, we have our free tools. So we offer a uh, set of free tools for you to, uh, you know, uh, just uh, try out uh, browser stack and try out the different, uh, you know, just if you want to just do a quick check of screenshots. So if you want to load a screenshot of your website across different browsers and devices, you can do that using our screenshots product. Uh, if you want to see, you know, how your website renders uh, across different breakpoints on your screen, you can use our responsive tool for that. Uh, and uh, the last one is Speed Lab. So we actually uh, test the performance of your website. So we load your website on different browsers and mobile devices, uh, capture some key benchmarks and metrics, uh, and uh, give you a score on how fast or slow your website is, uh, you know, on different browsers and devices. So please uh, definitely take the time to check it out. Uh, we're also going to be putting up on the chat uh, a link to uh, a exclusive pack uh, for uh, browser stack. Uh, so you can actually uh, use a uh, uh, what we call a uh, browser stack pack, uh, which will give you a free one month access to all of our products. Uh, so the team will be putting that up uh, on our uh, on the chat interface. So make sure you check that out. Uh, click on that link and, and redeem it. It's very very easy. It takes you just uh, just a minute or less. So yeah, uh, with that, let me go over to Simon uh, and just do a quick introduction. So uh, Simon's uh, joining us from uh, House of Test. He's a test automation engineer. Uh, he's also, I think, an iOS uh, developer uh, by night, uh, and uh, you know, he's somebody who's uh, built built a great brand uh, and and sort of has given a lot of talks around the world around testing, around Git, uh, which is one of his passions. Uh, loves to share his experiences and learnings and uh, definitely, you know, I would uh, urge you to check it out. Uh, you know, we went through some of the previous talks that Simon has given and uh, really informative and really engaging. And uh, I'm really excited to introduce him to you today and uh, hand it over to you, Simon. Uh, you can take over and uh, let's get started with the webinar. Thank you Simon, so you are... much. Yeah, Parveen, I just can't share my screen. Yeah, let me stop my share. Yeah. Wonderful. And Simon, you can also turn on your video. Perfect. Thank you so much, Parveen. That's an absolutely pleasure to be with you all here today. So hello and welcome, everyone. I'm super happy and excited to be here today with you all. Um, mobile app development and testing it's, is such an exciting thing. In the sense of sharing uh, is caring, I want to talk to you a little bit today about um, how you can test mobile apps and to lay out a strategy. So in this talk, I'm specifically, specifically um, focusing on testing of native mobile apps and less on things for um, progressive web apps or hybrids. Of course, um, the concepts and all the things around them, which I'm going to mention, may also be applicable for testing um, web apps and hybrids on mobile devices. 
Also, I am not going into any specific deep technical de details in this talk. I will have a look at concepts and techniques a little bit different as you might be used to. So then, if you can see and hear me clearly, I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, let me know or let us know in the chat. I would say, yeah, let's jump right in. To start off with, I would like to mention um, first a couple of things you should be aware of. So this is a very personal experience report and, that, and does not necessarily reflect the opinions and the, um, of my employer or any customer of mine. And note all the things I'm mentioning in this talk are going to work for you. Uh, uh, in this talk are going to work for you or might not be, are not going to work or might be not applicable or needed at all in your unique context. And please let me know if you have made some other additional experiences or things one should consider and include into a test strategy as well. Or even if you disagree with me, that's absolutely fine. So the first question you might have at this point is, what is this all about? And what I am doing here at this time of the day to listen to Simon? So in the next couple of minutes, I would like to share with you a couple of things which I have personally experienced and collected in the past yeah, roughly one and a half years of being actively um, testing in the mobile app industry. I hope there are things in this talk which you can yeah, learn from or take with you and give it a try in your particular context. The thing which I like and drives me the most of being in this industry is to see things uh, changing every single day and seeing new devices, all these lovely little gadgets, uh, released on the market quite frequently. So it's a pure joy of having this possibility um, to constantly learn things along the way. And that's, uh, yeah, probably the most important thing for me. I'm really... Um, thankful for having this possibility to learn every day in this of being in this industry. So a long time ago, <laughs> back in the year 1999, so that's roughly 22 years ago, oh my god, time runs really fast, I bought my very first mobile phone. And now you can actually start guessing and betting how old I am. <laughs> At this time back, I bought a Nokia 3210. What a phone that was, I tell you. Its main functionalities were um, calling someone, of course, writing SMS and playing the all famous snake game on it. With 160 million units sold, this phone is one, one of the most popular and successful phones ever created. Its unique features at that time back were actually a changeable cover, that was super cool, an internal antenna, customizable ringtones, and three games. The snake game, which I mentioned already, a memory game and a game called Rotation. But I actually barely uh, remind myself uh, how this game or what this, this game Rotation was all about. So I was really focused on this, on this snake game and uh, writing SMS and calling someone. That's, was the, that was fantastic. So this, at, this, this, at this time back, this was a really uh, fantastic piece of technology. I don't remember the exact price of it back then, but I'm, it must have been around somewhere between, I guess, 150 British pounds, somewhere like that. Today, you can still get that phone on certain auction platforms for around 40 euros or so, but yeah, you probably would have to, to actually replace the battery by the time now, yeah, after 22 years, I think that would be time to replace the battery. Now, testing on such a phone was basically throwing it into the dirt to see if it survived or not. 
So this was my start as a user, as an end user into the world of mobile devices. That was actually pretty cool when I, yeah, when I look back now. Of course, there were also some other big players on the market at that time back besides Nokia. There was Ericsson, Siemens, and also Motorola, of course. So if we um, were all in one room today, I would probably ask you if you could raise your hand if you actually owned one of these Asian phones. But yeah, let's, uh, let's actually do that another time. Huh? Today, the world looks, yeah, looks a little bit different and the requirements we have for mobile phones looks also a little bit different. Well, calling someone is still quite popular, I guess, but it's not the main fo focus anymore. And the snake game, nah, I don't think so. I don't think so that's heavily used anymore these days. So today we actually want much, much more than just having a snake game or writing SMS or yeah, even call someone. We want to be, we want at least to be able to fly drones and maybe a little bit later on making a phone call to check whether lunch is served and then post, of course, a selfie on Twitter to show the world what we have had for lunch. You know, that's really crazy stuff, I tell you. And sometimes I almost can't believe it how far we even have come now in these times. So here we are today facing the challenge of hanging every, a very diverse field of things we can do with our Android and iOS mobile devices. Testing on all these different devices on, on those versions which we have, it's pretty cool and also quite challenging because one can just not test a mobile app today on every possible device and operating system. And you know what? The good thing is we don't have to because what I have seen in most cases, that's, that's of course depends very heavily on your context uh, where you are working, that we are going to, yeah, to actually limit ourselves to support only a certain, yeah, let's say a certain bandwidth of um, devices and operating systems. But how do we get finally on with this challenge on testing on our mobile apps today? What can a test strategy possibly um, consist of? What could we add to our testing belt? Well, you have to start somewhere and then learn from it as you move on. You can't get it right finally from the beginning on. You have to um, experiment and see what works best and what not. So let's see and what we actually could add to our testing um, tool, bay, uh, tool belt today. So one of the best places to start with is, of course, as a test that you're probably aware of, asking questions and asking questions actually to those who have an idea or a specific requirement, any feedbacks or anything else, which is the source of truth or the source for creating a specific feature, um, yeah, or having then finally feature in which goes into our production backlog. I know this is not every time possible or needed to start here because, yeah, as I said before, this is very context dependent. If you um, join an already running project or if you have the joy of being starting a new, fresh, uh, new fresh project from the greenfield. But it's always good to know at least, at least the people behind it, behind an idea or behind a requirement so that you can try to exchange information and actually get to the source what, what the purpose of your app finally shall be. And then of course, asking questions about the planned or already existing architecture landscape to get the big picture is inevitable. From where does the app get all its data? Where is the user data stored? And are there any backend services which feed our data, to feed the data in, you know? And how many users are we going to serve? Is that just a 100 user or is it 1 million or 10 million or? 100 million, you know, these are all like things which are very, very 
um, important to know to lay out the strategy or to grow with your test strategy. So these and much more are viable questions and important to get some input on to get an overview of all the involved pieces of an app to lay out our strategy for our testing endeavors finally. And just as a side note, I touched it a little bit before, a test strategy is never kind of done done and then you are finished. It grows and shrinks as the product evolves over time, of course. A test strategy doesn't necessarily have to be written down in 100 pages. There are many, many, many other forms where it can reside in, in a mind map or just in your brains or by talking about it. But yeah, one thing you have to keep in mind is, or is that do good, good things with your testing and talk about it regularly because sometimes we uh, testing isn't that visible. So we have to actually talk about our, the stuff we are doing. Next up, um, we have the whole topic about user experience. User experience uh, with usability and accessibility embedded into it is super important because there is finally no mercy from mobile device users. Once you have made a bad impression, it is very, very hard to make that up again. You know, it's like going to an interview for a job and you must mess completely up, then it's actually very, very hard to get back to, to a state where to actually start fresh. So that's, that's hard, yeah. We often have, of course, we often have in project, uh, in, in app projects or in web projects, whatever, UX experts, which takes care of that more or less, but it doesn't harm, of course, to ask questions all around these topics or have then finally an extra eye on it from a testing perspective. Now, accessibility is uh, super important or gets more and more popular these days. And accessibility is finally usability. And with that, we should also consider asking questions about what we have and want to consider regarding um, the accessibility of our app. Is Are there any regu uh, regulations we have to follow? Uh, and so on, you know, accessibility is such a fundamental, a fundamental thing for a mobile app because there are lots of people, of course, out there who rely on the mobile apps we produce in order to move around independently. So asking questions and doing testing around accessibility and usability are fundamental. So we want to consider them in our test strategy in any case. So um, yeah, yesterday was a, was a pretty cool day yesterday. So I had the pleasure to um, join Rob Whittaker's first um, accessibility course about iOS. So Rob Whittaker is an English guy who has made some fantastic resources and blogs all around mobile accessibility. You can actually find him on this website here. Uh, if you want to get deep in accessibility and getting a pro, have a look at it and you will definitely learn heaps from it. So the session which I attended yesterday was actually highly an interactive session loaded with tons of important information which I still have to digest uh, yeah, in the coming days and weeks. So yeah, go on. And uh, he also published uh, actually a book on the whole inclusive apps, developing inclusive apps, uh, what we should consider and where we should put an eye on. And yeah, definitely worth to check it out. So let's dive a little bit into now into direction development. So once we have started with development, each one actually can write, can start right away with implementing testing without investing a huge effort in it. So start using linters in the IDE, doing static code analysis to check code uh, quality in the security aspects, using mobile simulators to test on. So to, use them constantly while you're hacking something. And then of course, also test on real devices to get a first impression and sort out the most obvious things. Unfortunately, uh, and way too often, 
I see things which are marked as ready for testing. So which, which goes to, to the testing team or which, which they say, okay, now someone else can have a look at it. Um, yeah, I see too much of these uh, features who are flagged in a Scrum or Kanban board which then just do not work on a real device. So it's so sometimes it's kind of a hurdle just to switch on your real device, plug it in and then test, not only on simulators, of course, simulators on emulators or whatever are very useful and very cheap to use, but yeah, there is nothing so cool and uh, needed than running uh, or making a first test of your app on the real device, of course. So next up, uh, in the mood of development, <laughs> um, well, I probably don't have to mention that too deeply how, how important that is. And sometimes I really wonder why people are not yet aware of how much they can or could contribute uh, to testing by starting out with writing some small unit tests here and there and pairing up, of course, with each other for doing some reviews on a pull request or whatever, you know, it doesn't have to be always a pull request. It can just be uh, uh, knowledge transfer and so on. So like pairing, pair programming and the whole thing around ensemble programming and so on, that's really, really valuable because you automatically actually transfer your knowledge to another person, you know, and then we have a shared knowledge and I always say, oh, yeah, sharing is caring at the end. So that doesn't, uh, it doesn't cost actually much. We just, yeah, each of us has to feel responsible for doing it and yeah, just do it like Nike. Then finally, once we have a package of our app ready, we can start our first bigger testing endeavors actually. Maybe you have a dedicated tester or a testing team or yeah, embedded in your project team, which explores the app, of course. And maybe you as a whole team are doing some kind of team testing, you know, some test session, session-based testing or whatever. Um, so the, the, the most important thing here is, I guess, that everyone uh, tests with, with, a physical, with a physical device here in a test team to actually uh, spot spot the issues um, very early, very left in the whole process. So there are actually no limits here to exploration. It just takes a little bit of time and someone who actually does it, of course. Then what else could we add? Well, there is this thing about beta testing when you have an app. Yes, there is actually much more we could do. So we, we just have to set up some beta testing and offer this accordingly. So for the Android people, they have the um, possibility to integrate that into the Google Play Store where people then can sign up for, um, for uh, taking part of a beta testing. And in iOS, there's test flight where, uh, yeah, some people can be uh, get invited um, via email exactly. And maybe, maybe over time, of course, you get a little fan base of beta testers as your product progresses. So you get a, a little fan base of beta testers together. Um, yeah, after some time, which you then can um, take back. And always when you have new releases, you can actually um, kind of um, release that into yeah, in your beta store. So this could be actually starting out with some, yeah, with your working mates or colleagues, friends and family and so on. That's, that's all how, how the things can, can, can actually, you can get uh, people on board with your beta testing. So we have seen a couple of things now, but is that actually enough? Is that all we can do or is there, is there anything Anything else we could do? Well, there is. So eat your own dog food. That think you the most of you will be um, aware what that means or uh, what the purpose of that is. That is when you use your own product uh, in your daily life and not just for testing purposes. So everyone, so for example, everyone in the company in your team uh, uses. Um, the, your own app on 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 your private on your private 
phones on a regular daily basis. And using an app on your private phone, I think using it on your specific phone, that's, that's the main point here. So uh, because there is nothing more personal than your own <laughs> your own mobile phone because you have everything is installed which you like on your phone you know you have maybe a thousand apps running in the background you have your flashlight on you have whatever things enabled you know and to just to simulate that behavior on a on a testing device is almost not possible you know because you yeah that's that's why it's so important to use your own own personal phone because that most of of us are using it like almost 24 hours even yeah when getting up when getting to bed you know so with all with just with with that that awareness you can you can you can add a lot of value in in kind of exploring exploring your product but is that again is that enough you know have we done have we actually done all the things which we could to test or get in touch with our app well let's see Productive, productive preview app. Well, there is another idea here, um, or the idea behind this is you make a one-to-one -one copy of your app and add some new shiny experimental features um, to it and let the world use it and test it um, for you. And don't get me wrong here, the purpose here is to have a fully tested and productive app called Preview. Besides, you know, it's kind of precise besides of your main app, which is in the store. And this has the, the wonderful um, advantage that you can get feedback up on new features, which you have in mind, you know. Once you have collected then enough feedback and data from it, you then can decide if you want to go further with this specific feature uh, or not, you know, because feedback will roll in. And then you can actually decide if that was a good idea to come up with or to, or if this is a good idea to release this uh, feature onto the productive main app or not, you know. So this is, this is pretty cool. So in the current project where I'm working in, we make quite good um, experience with that kind of with this. Uh, is that enough? <laughs> Can we do more even? Well, let's get the point to the point where the automation comes in, you know, the all famous automation today. And automation is all about regression testing at the end, yeah, I would say. That is where uh, it comes into play. And that's the thing everyone loves, you know. <laughs> so we are a little bit biased. That that's why I actually structured my talk a little bit different because, uh, yeah, we have the tendency today to talk about immediately about automation. But to be honest, it's just a really small part in the whole world, in the whole testing game, as you have seen so far. And of course, it's important because you don't want to repeat the boring stuff, you know, work over and over again every day. You know, that's really, really, that's where mistakes can happen, you know, if we have to, uh, yeah, repeat things every day a thousand times. That's, that's really, really boring. But be aware that automation has its cost because it, because it needs to be well treated and well maintained at the end. And yeah, about automation, um, try to automate what you have learned through exploration and, and, and actually vice versa. So I actually also got to the point uh, with my working mate where we run kind of out of ideas and then we automated uh, a piece <laughs> a piece and then we suddenly uh, noticed some some issues when we try to automate something and that kind of led us to more ideas how we could explore the app differently so this is also a very a very nice and a very nice touch of of, the, of having or or um, developing the automation in a mobile app testing strategy, exactly. 
So what we have to consider in automation is uh, interoperability exactly. So how do we want to interact with the device? And of course, there are tons of, of possibilities here. So we could actually just go for simulators and emulators, which is, yeah, which, which could be enough in your case, of course. And then we can also test on local devices, so real devices, like when you build up a, a local device farm, you know, then it would probably look, or you start somewhere here and then suddenly you realize, oh, <laughs> we have to buy more devices. And then we have to take care of all the old devices. And then we should actually keep some devices on an older version. And then suddenly everything gets a little bit more, yeah, into the cost of maintenance or a little bit more tricky. That's where probably a cloud device farm could um, help you out. So um, yeah, I don't have to mention um, or explain what that exactly is, but that's um, a very um, a cool thing yeah, um, to have run your automated tests in a, in a cloud device farm with real devices. And besides that, often, uh, cloud test um, provider also provides you with um, app life. So we heard that before from Parin, where you can actually um, test um, or explore your app in the cloud, in the device, on a real device. So this is also very useful, you know, because you can't buy every device, of course, that's that's also very costly if you try to buy every possible device. So you have to somehow restrict yourself or uh, yeah, to think about how do we want or where do we want to run our tests? So if you have some um, confidential data or whatever, if you face that, then you probably have to look into yeah, running a local farm. Um, if you have kind, if you don't have that restriction of security concerns or whatever, then yeah, you can have a look at um, at the device farm um, in the cloud. But yeah, everything costs, of course. That's it. So let's quickly have a look at. Um, a tool set. So this this is just here, very small collection of tools one can use these days for mobile test automation. That's just to give you some ideas here. So I actually haven't used Tapster robot that we haven't actually bought one. So this is a robot which actually uh, taps on a real device, which uh, <laughs> with a little kind of a finger, that sounds really pretty cool. I haven't used that so far. I just have seen it once uh, live at a conference. That's really, was really cool to see that. Then there is KV and PDOCs. I haven't used those. Uh, just mainly work these days with Appium. Yeah, that's just a small set of tools which we can use. So is that all? Is that really enough? Is this all we can do? Or is there even more? Is there even more ideas out there? Well, there is we can even go <laughs> further to actually gain more device and OS diversity with testing our apps or more uh, on more people's private phones. We could actually hire a crowd of testers from, from one of these big crowd testing companies, which then handle everything for us. This is cool. This is actually be really cool. But be aware of that it can take quite a bit of effort from your side till you have them up and running with all the necessary information they need for efficiently testing your app. So crowd testing sounds really cool, but yeah, just don't be blinded by the word in crowd testing. It actually takes a little bit of effort. And don't forget in crowd testing, someone has to play the DJ who plays the music and also comes up with new music. So the DJ is the entertainer and the maintainer of a crowd. But is that, is that it? Is crowd testing the last piece in our puzzle? Oh, we almost forgot <laughs> something, yeah. Don't forget to test your backend if you have one. 
<laughs> and services too, you know, for example, create an API test set in the classical sense for testing the backend endpoints and so on, and try to integrate that into your CI, CD pipeline. So backend gets often forgotten because UI is so shiny and takes all the energy. But if you have a backend and some services, yeah, probably one should also kind of consider like the backends in your test strategy. So is that all or is there even more? Observability in production, like any other industry, um, to observe how your users are using your product out in the field is tremendously important. So let me, let me try to draw you a little analogy. So car manufacturers, for example. Car manufacturers log errors, warnings, and other stuff into cars onboard memory so that when your car goes into maintenance, the mechanic can check whether there is something which has to be taken care of or not. And further, the car manufacturers analyze what the mechanic reports back to them in case, of course, you have a Tesla, which is connected to the internet, the car will probably uh, yeah, report that back uh, by calling just home, by, uh, by, by actually herself. <laughs> further from all this data, and finally, you know, uh, cust and customer feedbacks and complaints and so on, the car manufacturers monitor the different car models they have out there in the world in order to improve and fix things and also to come up with new models and cars. So for us, that means logging is important because we want to see what our app is doing or what our app was doing at a certain point back in time. Did something unexpected happen in the code? And analytics is important because we may want to know how the users are using our app, on which device they are using it which device OS they are using the most, which versions of our app they are using. Did they do an update or not? At which days of the, of the week they are using our app the most? More and more and more. These are all these little things which are important to know from analytics and of course also uh, crash analytics. Yeah. Monitoring is important because you may want to know how your backend services are performing in production when millions of users um, query them from uh, their mobile devices. And another very interesting part, which is also not that, that obvious uh, of monitoring is into this world of sustainability, especially sustainability, is also to find an answer to the questions how can we optimize our infrastructure costs um, and improve uh, of being more sustainable for the better in the world, you know? So observe, listen to the feedback and take your actions accordingly to improve your app. So now I think, that's it, huh? or is there, is that, is there actually, is, is there more? What else could we do? What else could we add to our testing tool belt? Well, we thought, so in my current project, we did a little experiment. So actually um, we took this extra step or we came up with a new idea. So we actually paired up with a different company, which also um, develops uh, mobile apps. So we did that as experiments. So we paired up and asked them if they would kind of share their knowledge, what they have collected in their testing, in their testing their app. And we did a kind of a knowledge ex day exchange with a completely uh, different company which was which was not known for, uh, to us we actually didn't know the people before and so we had to do this research before and actually take some bravery sometimes to drive your own innovation because you are 
uh, after some time you actually fall into this kind of cave of being yourself, you alone, or you 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 alone, focused on your app, and not seeing what what others are actually doing. So this was a very 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 useful experience which we uh, did to push our thinking forward. Uh, in the last couple of weeks. That was a super, super cool. So I really recommend do your research, look out in the world how others are testing their apps or how they're developing their apps and drive your innovation by, yeah, yeah, you will probably won't be able to actually uh, <laughs> um, get in touch with uh, the team of Spotify app or whatever. Who never knows? Don't say never, but try to actually. Um, contact other companies, you know, and ask them for a knowledge exchange in testing or whatever. That really can push your thinking forward. And the conclusion of all the things which I have mentioned here is there are actually trade-offs in mobile app testing. We can't cover every possible device or version. Uh, of course, too high would be the cost to actually justify this and actually not need it because you have to actually narrow a little, you narrow, yeah, you, have, you actually have to limit yourself at a certain point. And then also be aware of that you have to actually be very, um, very attentive or actually listen to the feedback of your productive uh, production users, you know, what they actually report back. That's why. I mentioned observability that is just a, such an important um, topic, you know, to, re re to actually react on feedback which you get from, from actually uh, the live users. So don't panic here and scream, rather take one or even several pieces with you all of the things which I've mentioned in the last couple of minutes and try to focus on the right things which matter for your unique um, context. So try to keep up with, uh, with our speed in the industry. Look uh, out what is released. So you can have a look at books. You can have a look at blogs, experience reports, uh, doing experience report like I did today or I'm doing here right now by yourself. That's also just want to know how you are testing your apps. Um, follow others, keeps, keep an eye, uh, keep your eyes open, and from time to time, ask yourself, how can I contribute to this world? So with a book, finally, with a book, I would, yeah, like come to an end of this talk, uh, building mobile apps at scale can give you even more ideas. It's a fantastic reference book, which was just released in April this year. And there are really um, some interesting chapters in it about um, testing in general, performance, security, if you want to have a look at that. Also, there's this, this chapter about performance. This is really uh, super insightful. I uh, wasn't aware of that there are also tools which helps you to test the performance on the mobile app itself. So this is, yeah, really helpful or useful to have a, uh, a look at that. And feature flagging is, is, is mentioned, automation. Um, there's a chapter of experimentation. So if you want to go far, then check out this book. This is pretty cool. So with that, I think it was almost, yeah, it was almost 20 years ago when I last played the snake came on my Nokia phone. Yeah, I actually don't have it anymore. Uh, I think I sold it at the end, but I should have kept it. Damn, I should have kept that phone. <laughs> Thanks for listening and watching. Uh, yeah, stay safe and happy. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Simon. That was very interesting. It's, it's great to look back at the Nokia days. And uh, I remember we used to play Snake a lot in class when we were in college <laughs> with our phones. Uh, but no, great. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that presentation. I think we have a lot of questions. Uh, so I'm going to dive right into it. Uh, let me just start my screen share again.
shoot one second. All right, let me just dive into the questions. It's fine. Um, okay. So, okay, the first question is around uh, testing data, right? So when you're testing an app, uh, which is uh, where the testing data is independent from the, the mobile device itself, right? Uh, so like, what is your sort of recommendation? You know, for example, when I'm testing with images, I need to see the exit info on a particular image or set of images. Uh, when I'm using like a local device versus a cloud device provider, like what is your experience been? Uh, in time to solve these kind of problems. Mm, test data, that's a super interesting topic and it's always different, you know? Um, so what I currently experience or what we have in our mobile app team is we have a separate instance, a so-called integration instance where all, this, uh, all the test data from different services are kind of feed it to us so this is a huge topic test data of course and you need as a it depends a little bit how big your app is you know but the, it actually needs someone who actually manages the test data and when you are testing in the cloud of course then you have to give access or yeah make sure that the device in the cloud has access to your kind of integration test data set, of course, yeah. But yeah, test ma data management is a, it's actually a huge, a huge topic. And we have kind of a, so in, in my current team, we have a separate team or separate teams which take care of that. So for us uh, in our app, because we are handling um, schedule data and it's a kind of a transportation app, uh, we actually have um, a copy of the production because we don't have any sensitive data in the production. Of course, there are, there are uh, that's, the, that's the actual use data, but, but we actually don't copy that to our integration. It's just the, um, the, 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 the schedules of this transportation app and, and all the data is actually copy of the production app and gets regularly updated. But yeah, it depends a little bit um, how sensitive your data is, you know, if you can just take the productive data or whatever, yeah. That's, but it's a super interesting topic, yeah. Test data management. Yeah. Good. Um, okay. Another question is around uh, parallelization with, uh, I'm guessing, uh, uh, multiple sort of devices, right? Uh, with a single test run. Uh, maybe just give some pointers on, on how to do that at a high level. Point. I didn't didn't get the question right. How so... how how would a user go about? Sorry. How would a user go about parallelizing their tests? So they're able to run their tests on multiple devices at the same time. At the same time, yeah, yeah, okay. For for that we use, <laughs> for that we use, yeah, we use browser stack for that, and that's really easy to do. Yeah, that's really easy. So this is actually okay. super, super super helpful for that, and it's really easy to do that. Uh, yeah. I think mm -hmm. uh, perhaps some good. Uh, I think Simon would be helpful. I think people have asked about good resources uh, around. APM and automation using APM, uh, you yeah. know, mobile test automation using APM. Exactly. Like, uh, yeah. uh, do you have any good references you can share? Good reference. Yeah, go to the awful, the official documentation of Appium and, and, and okay. have a look at that. That's all, it's quite well documented how you can do it there. So uh, yeah, have a look at that. Yeah. Great, great, awesome. Awesome. All right, I'm just going through more questions. Okay, um, a couple of questions around, uh, uh, you know, API testing with mobile apps uh, and, you know, how do you sort of test uh, uh, sort of the APIs that your mobile apps are using and making sure that they are, uh, you know, responding correctly. Exactly, so well, actually, actually I mentioned it, don't forget your backend services. So uh, also test them. And for that, the, yeah, for, of course, when we test, uh, we, we actually kind of test through the UI. We actually also implicitly test the backend services to a certain degree as we running our UI tests. But of course, if you want to have particular API tests or if the UI is not needed to test a certain endpoint or whatever, then 
just go for the API test directly, of course. Yeah, it's also kind of having this balance exactly what shall I test on the UI and what not, you know, and what can I do better directly on the API exactly. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, okay, a couple of questions around, okay, one is again around what is the most feasible tool for native app automation in your experience? Uh, and what do you recommend in terms of a split between using simulators or emulators versus real devices, uh, you know, when you're thinking about going out to production? <laughs> That's a good question also, yeah. So for native apps, I think I made some good experience with Appio, works quite, yeah, works quite smooth. And when it comes to, of course, you can also, what you can also could do if you're specific on iOS, for example, you can, you can directly use XE test. That's also possible. It doesn't need to be at, it need to be absolutely Appium whenever, because if you have just an iOS app, then it's fine. You can directly go with X. XE test actually and and build up uh, run them on yeah in the first instance you can run them on your uh, Mac minis directly with emulators that's I also have heard people doing that which is and they actually say that's a very very reliable test so this is really good but um, we are actually developing in our team a native uh, iOS app and a native Android app so we are have built up a framework which actually with Appium which supports both of them at the same time so we can run them both uh, tests on, bo on, on, on both um, platforms at the same time with the, with the same framework that was our kind of goal yeah and of course it's always that's it, always a trade-off you know shall I really test only on simulators Dur during development I think it's superb testing on yeah on um as you are building features on the go, then checking that on the simulator is 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 cool, you know. And they are also pretty good. I have to admit, they are really pretty good, you know. But at the end, before we go into production, we just want to have this 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 feeling of yeah, we have tested it on a real device, you know. And it's yeah, and it's also this kind of I can test. Uh, my app on a real device in the cloud that's also possible but then I just but yeah and at the end of the day I just want to have my real device and testing my app on my real device here on my desk so to have this this kind of good feeling that I can say okay I think I think we are ready for going into production yeah. got it got it okay Fair enough. Um, what about, uh, I think this is an interesting question, right? I think, uh, how do you think about load or performance testing uh, for, for mobile apps? Uh, you know, you spoke about like, you know, initially in your presentation, you know, designing your app for, uh, figuring out how many users you're designing it for. And, um, you know, let's say I need to plan for a few million users, let's say, um, how would you sort of do the load, load testing for that scenario? Mm, that's a very tricky question. So, yeah, you could start out with testing your backend services, your bank of back uh, backend, of course. Uh, then you can go the uh, yeah uh, testing your 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 backend services with 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 kind of the usual way as or as we know it. Um, a little bit trickier is then yeah, how do you test the actually the mobile app or performance test the mobile app? on the device itself you know that's the other question you know so i'm not 100% in that uh, absolutely a pro on that <laughs> i have to admit but actually you can you, yeah you can as as the app is on you're running on your own device you know you can you can uh, have a grasp on the feeling or or uh, on your local on, on your device when when you test it on your device itself of course if you depends a little bit how your app is uh, how the architecture of your app looks like and if there are some 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 spots or features in your app which might cause performance issues so if you uh, if, if 
if you have, for example, an app like, like WhatsApp or one of these uh, sorts of app, then you might have a look at how performant is the kind of the, when you make video calls, if you have tons, tons of, of, of um, messages in your chat box, how fast is the scrolling and so on. So yeah, there is a lot of uh, things which, which you have to keep in mind and and, and specific specific for your app if there are certain risks or what or if you if you if you say no which we, we just we just see well, what we uh, repute um, <laughs> what act, what um, users report back from production uh, from production you know but if you do, if you do that and face some issues then have you have to actually uh, be quick in in actually um, releasing a fix for that if there are any problems yeah sorry. But there is a good chapter in this book, in this book, which I mentioned, which I mentioned before, there's a good sure, chapter sure. that how you can actually test that I haven't, I haven't re read it through or tried it myself, but uh, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to do that. Yeah. Awesome. Great. Uh, thanks, Simon. I think we're out of time, but I uh, wanted to thank you for uh, taking the time, uh, you know, to, to give this great presentation. Uh, I think covered sort of the fundamentals of mobile app testing really well. Um, uh, uh, folks, I think I see a lot of unanswered questions. Uh, I, apologies for us not being able to cover all of them. Uh, what we will do is, uh, you know, I know a lot of you had questions specific to browser stack, and I think some of you were expecting demos. So we will be uh, making, uh, putting up a blog post on, we try to address as many of your questions as possible. Uh, we will also sort of have a link. We, we do have uh, previous webinars we've done where we've done a demo of browser stack, both uh, manual testing and automated app testing. So. Uh, we'll post a link to that uh, webinar uh, in the blog post and uh, please do check it out uh, when you get a chance. Uh, uh, just a quick uh, heads up. I think uh, we are planning a summer of learning. Uh, we had this uh, uh, last year and uh, you know we're really excited to do this again this year uh, where we have uh, five sessions over two, two days, uh, 30th June and 7th July. Uh, so please do uh, check it out. Uh, the the team is going to be putting up a link uh, on the chat uh, for you to just uh, click and register. So please make sure you do that. Uh, we'll be covering some of the popular testing frameworks um, specific to uh, testing your websites. Uh, so please do do that. And uh, lastly, uh, we will be putting up a poll uh, for you to just uh, you know help us understand uh, uh, how well you liked this session. Uh, just give us your feedback. Uh, so once I stop the uh, broadcast. Uh, that link will pop up uh, uh, so that uh, you know you can just have a quick look at it uh, and and fill it out. It just takes you uh, thirty seconds. Uh, thanks again, everyone, uh, for taking the time to attend. Uh, really appreciate it, and thank you, Simon, for uh, joining us and hosting this webinar. Really thank you so much. It. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you all.